this were to be new made when thou art old, and see thy blood warm when thou feelest it cold. From fairest creatures we desire increase, that thereby beauty's rose might never die. But as the reaper should by time decease, his tender air might bear his memory. But thou, contracted to thine own bright eyes, feedest thy light's flame with self-substantial fuel making a famine where abundance lies. Thyself thy foe, to thy sweet self too cruel. Thou that art now the world's fresh ornament and only herald to the gaudy spring, within thine own bud buriest thy content, and tender churl makest waste in niggarding. Pity the world, or else this glutton be, to eat the world's dew by the grave and thee. What is this sonnet? I, well, it's a 14 line poem with a, a definite rhyming pattern, etc. And they're different forms, excuse me. Uh, Shakespeare used the form that has the rhyming couplet at the end. Slightly different length than the. When forty winters shall besiege thy brow and dig deep trenches in thy beauty's field, thy youth's proud livery so gazed on now will be a tattered weed of small worth held. Then being asked where all thy beauty lies, where all the treasure of thy lusty days, to say within thine own deep sunken eyes, were an all eating shame and thriftless praise. How much more praise Deserve thy beauty's use, if thou couldst answer. This fair child of mine shall sum my count and make my old excuse, proving his beauty by succession thine. This were to be new made when thou art old, and see thy blood warm when thou feelest it cold. So what was this? What was this? This was, um, it was a come on, actually. Look in thy glass and tell the face thou viewest. Now is the time that face should form another, whose fresh repair, if now thou not renewest, thou dost beguile the world unbless the mother for where is she so fair whose uneared womb disdains the tillage of thy husbandry or who is he so fond will be the tomb of his self-love to stop posterity thou art thy mother's glass <coughs> And she in thee calls back the lovely April of her prime. So thou, through windows of thine age, shall see, despite of wrinkles, this thy golden time. But if thou, live, rememberest not to be, die single, and thine image dies with thee. Unthrifty loveliness, why dost thou spend upon thyself thy beauty's legacy? 
Nature's bequest gives nothing but doth lend. And being frank, she lends to those are free. Then, beauteous niggard, why dost thou abuse the bounteous largesse given thee to give? Profitless usurer, why dost thou use so great a sum of sums yet canst not live? For having traffic with thyself alone, thou of thyself, thy sweet self doth deceive. Then how, when nature calls thee to be gone, what acceptable audit canst thou leave? Thy unused beauty must be tombed with thee, which used lives the executor to be. Here, this person has been sent to help a certain period of history happen. And that was his job. And so he looks around and he sees the most likely person to be able to conceive of the job of bringing on this new age. I don't know if it was the Renaissance. It was after the Renaissance, I think. And so he gets in his, in his sight this guy that has everything he needs, except he's kind of lazy, he's kind of spoiled, he has so much, he enjoys doing his own private stuff, he's not really, he, he, he hasn't interacted with the world and he's not figuring to. So, so this is this teacher that is shaming this, this young guy for being so selfish and uh, not seeing beyond who he is and what he is. And the young guy cannot imagine how much better it is when you become generous and start interacting with the bigger world in a positive way. And so he's given this big sales pitch. He says, you've got to do it. He says, time is going to be stealing from you. You work with me, kid. As time, time steals from you, I push your new stuff. I'll, I'll make you new again. Those hours that with gentle work did frame the lovely gaze whereon every eye doth dwell will play the tyrants to the very same and that unfair which fairly doth excel. For never-ending time leads summer on to hideous winter and confounds him there. Sap checked with frost and lusty leaves quite gone, beauty or snowed and barrenness everywhere. Then were not summer's distillation left a liquid prisoner pent in walls of glass Beauty's effect with beauty were bereft, nor it nor no remembrance what it was. But flowers distilled, though they with winter meet, lose but their show, their substance still lives sweet. Then let not winter's ragged hand deface in thee thy summer Ere thou be distilled, make sweet some vial, treasure thou some place with beauty's treasure, ere it be self-killed. That use is not forbidden usury, which happies those that pay the willing loan. That's for thyself to breed another thee. Or ten times happier, be it ten for one, ten times thyself were happier than thou art if ten of thine ten times refigured thee. Then what could death do if thou shouldst depart? 
leaving the living in posterity. Be not self-willed, for thou art much too fair, like fair-minded, to be death's conquest and make worms thine heir. So it's a if you go for the argument, I, I think in the end the this is only the first sixteen sonnets. There's a hundred and fifty-five or fifty-six. So the next hundred and fifty is a continued story of this young person trying to deal with this what the guy is trying to help him understand, make him understand. So that's what it is. It's the first chapter, and it's ten times this before you get to the end of this set of sonnets.